No, 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 don't do it. No, no. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about classroom management, but specifically routines and procedures. Because on my last video, I got a question asking, how do you know which routines and procedures to use in your classroom? And I thought, that's a great question. Yes, I'll make a video about that. So here we are. The thing with routines and procedures is there is no specific written in stone. This will work every time for every teacher, every class. There just isn't because people are just different. And what works for one teacher in one classroom it might not work for another teacher or another classroom. You might even find a routine or procedure that works for you in your classroom right now. And then next year, it's not gonna work for that class. And you're gonna have to tweak little things here and there to make it work better for that class. And that's what makes it so tricky because you have to find what works for you and your classroom. So today I'm gonna go over routines and procedures that have worked for me, how I've kind of tweaked them to work for my specific style and my specific classroom. And then hopefully you can build onto that and make it work for your classroom. The big thing when making routines and procedures is you cannot assume anything. You need to make these routines and procedures as if your classroom is coming from outer space, another planet, they have no idea what you're talking about, no idea what to do. Because if you assume something, uh, you even miss one step because you assume that they know how to do it. They don't, and they will come up with their own step in the middle, and it's not going to be pretty or quiet. So make sure you're specific about every single step. The first big routine and procedure that you need to have is a morning routine. How do you want them to put up their backpacks? How do you want them to come into class? Once they get to their desk, what do you want them to do? Big tip, always, always, always have something on their desk for them ready to work on. Don't give them time to even ask what they're supposed to do or wonder what they're supposed to do. It needs to be the same thing every day. Otherwise, you're going to get a bajillion, what do we do today? What is this? I don't know how to do this. <sighs> Leave no room for questions. Yeah, pretty much. My morning routine was they hang off their backpacks outside, walked quietly into class, and they would get started on their daily five, and then that would go straight into workshop, where they had a must-do and may-do chart paper on the board. So they knew exactly what they must do, and then after they were done with those, they may do X, Y, Z. And it's going to take time to get this routine in place. There's going to be weeks where you have to pull back and start fresh as if they've never done this before and go over each step. Show them how you want them to do it, how you don't want them to do it. Show examples, give the rules for the workshop, everything. So big one, morning routine. The next big procedure that you need to have is pencils. What do you want the kiddo to do when their pencil breaks or it's dull or they don't have a pencil? This is a procedure that I struggled with so much my first year and then second year I got a better procedure and routine for it, but it was still... Uh... The thing that worked best for me was giving someone the pencil sharpener job. So each morning when students came in and got started on their daily five that was on their desk, a person who had the pencil sharpener job would go up to the pencil sharpener and call different teams and they would sharpen their pencils for them. The students do not sharpen their own pencils. Now their big tip, don't let the students sharpen their own pencils. Don't do it. Students are allowed to have two pencils at all times, so they would bring both their pencils up to the pencil sharpener and the person would sharpen them for them. And then go back to their seats, they have two sharpened pencils for the day, good to go. I would also have the typical like, jar of sharpened pencils and then jar of unsharpened dull pencils. But I learned do not put a whole new box of brand new sharpened pencils in this jar because they will magically disappear and you will not see them again. Gone, eaten, poof, into thin air. And later in the day if we decide to do a big writing assignment, the pencil sharper will go back up and I'll let them call teams and the pencil sharper will resharpen their two pencils for them. So pencils, definitely make a procedure for pencils. In elementary, we do a lot of whole class teaching on the carpet. So you need a procedure for kids to come to the carpet quickly and quietly. My first year, 
I had a bell, so I would ring the bell and the kids all knew to get up quietly, push in their chairs and come to the carpet. My second year, this did not work. I rang the bell, but then they would have to put everything away and they knew to sit with a bundle on their desk quietly. From there, I would call students to come to the carpet by teams or rows. This is a big one that oftentimes we had to stop and start over until the kids could do it correctly. This might mean doing it one time because then they, they're reminded and they get it. This could be doing it three more times, five more times, 10 times, who knows? But you need to do it as many times as you need to for those kids to get. They are going to do this procedure every time we need to come to the carpet. Because as soon as you start letting stuff slide, they're not going to stick to the procedure because they'll think they can get away with it again. Therefore, the carpet procedure takes a lot of time and effort but it's so worth it because once it is solidified in their brains of this is how they're going to come to the carpet every time, it's quick, it's smooth, it's quiet, yes. From there, you need to have a procedure on how the kids are going to go from the carpet back to their desks. If I really have to reteach this procedure, it takes time, but it is so worth it. I'll have everyone on the carpet and I'll tell exactly how I want them to walk to their seats. I need you to stand up, put your hands behind your back, bubble in your mouth, walk quickly, quietly to your desk, sit down and show me a bundle. And then I'll ask them, so where should your hands be? Behind your back. What should be in your mouth? A bubble. Okay, okay. Should we be skipping to our desks? No. Should we run? No. Should you be playing with your partner? No. Okay, so I'm gonna need one team to show the class how we can walk back to our seats. And they're all sitting there quietly because they want me to call on them. And so I'll go, oh, red team, can you show us how you can quietly walk back to your desk? Yeah, yeah. So they get up, they walk quickly, quietly to their desk, they do it exactly how I told them to. And then we give them a thumbs up if they did good, thumbs down if it wasn't so good. And then I'll ask a team to show me how we don't walk back to our seats. The kids love this one. Uh, blue team, can you show us how we do not walk back to our seats? and they get up and they like run to their seats. Some will walk around, do a little detour. Some are yelling. And then I sit there like, oh my gosh, no. And the class is dying laughing. And I ask them to come back to the carpet. And I ask that same team to show me how they walk back to their seats the correct way. And then they go and do it correctly. Then I'll have one more team show us how to do it correctly. And then I'll have the rest of them get up and show me how they walk their desk correctly. So yes, you need a routine and procedure for how they walk from their desk to the carpet and from the carpet to their desk. I highly recommend using hand signals for some of your procedures. So this one is restroom. If they need to go to the restroom, they just raise their hand and show me this quietly. They know if they're talking or they ask, I'm going to ignore them. So they just show me this and I'll either nod yes and then they can go or I'll show them five, which means ask me again in five minutes. If they need to get a drink of water, they show me the W. Same thing, I'll nod yes or I'll show them five to ask me in five minutes. Another one is one. This is if they need a pencil. So then they'll so they'll show me the one, I'll nod, then they'll go take the dull one, put it in the basket, grab a sharpened one, and they're good to go. They're awesome and super helpful because they're quick, quiet, no distractions. Yes. You will need a procedure for lining up. Lining up to go anywhere. So I'm still working on this one, but my procedure for this is pretty similar to the carpet one. I'll have, I'll call by row or team, they will go line up quietly, with their hands behind their back, bubbles in their mouth, that whole shebang. Um, again, if we really need to reteach this, which I do a lot, it'll go the same way. Oh, can I have one team show me how we can walk to line up? And then they go and they show me, I have another team show me how we don't line up. They do that, call them back, have them show me the correct way and that routine. Another tool that really helps me with my lines is Classroom Dojo. I have it on my phone, I'll pull up the app, there's a random button, so it'll pull up a random student and if they're standing correctly and quietly in line, I'll give them a point. Then I'll click another random student. And so since they have no idea who it's going to be, they make sure that they're in line. So Classroom Dojo, random button, good to go. Turning in papers is another procedure that you need to have. Where are kids going to turn in their papers when they're done? How are they going to turn in papers? I didn't have something like this in place my first year because I just tend to like, oh, I'll walk by and pick them up or I'll have them put them here today. It wasn't well thought out. So my second year, I made a turn it in bin. So each kid had their little file, their number, and they knew exactly where to put their papers. 
I would either dismiss them by row to turn it in, or if it was during workshop, then they knew that that's where they were to go turn in their papers. It also made it really easy for me to just go and flip through real quick to see who hasn't turned in which paper. Rather than when I just had a basket that they all turned their papers into, I had to go through and see and try and figure out who was missing what, and it was just too big of a hassle. So I really liked the turn it in bin. There would be times when they would be taking too long, but practicing this procedure was actually pretty fun. I just had a one minute timer. I'd flip that timer and I'd see which team could put their papers away neatly in their folders while being quick and quiet. And sometimes I'd give them either a class dojo point or sometimes they were just stoked that they won. Just know it is completely normal to have to reteach your entire procedures to go back and take quite a bit of time to go through making sure that they do it correctly, but it is so worth it. Don't just do it three times and then assume, oh, they got it or they'll get it. Mm -mm. That's what I did my first year. And let me tell you, it's way harder to go back months in and try to reteach from nothing instead of just really taking those first couple months and solidifying and hammering in those procedures because then it's going to be a quick reteach. So take the time to practice and reteach them. It'll make your year a whole lot smoother. Trust me because I didn't do it my first year and I was pulling my hair out. All right, so those are the big must-have routines and procedures that you need in your classroom. I hope that you found them helpful. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to ask. I promise I will respond. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe down below, and I'll see you next week.